Hello there, Mediocre Painter here, and I've been painting miniatures for some 30 odd years, and I'm doing YouTube videos to help you get into the wargaming hobby, because I've made the mistakes, so you don't have to. So today I'm going to be doing a sort of painting guide around the Eyes of the Nine from the Night Vault Shades by series, and how I went about painting them, the sort of pitfalls and such that I had, and so on and so forth. So these are a Zinch. Warband, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, minis in this warband. We have Vortimus, the All Seeing, who's uh, essentially our leader of the warband. We have Kacharek, who is a Zangor of some description. Then we have Navia and Chorosh, which I believe are twins. They look decidedly human to me. And then we have probably the coolest minis in this warband. We have a blue horror and some brimstone horrors. So, what about the push fit nature of these minis? How good are they? As all Shadespire miniatures are, they are push to fit. How well did these push to fit? These are not bad at all, um, as far as um, push fit goes. They are a little delicate, but as a lot of these miniatures are you do have to be a little careful but they did push fit together quite well if you want to know some tips on how to push fit miniatures together well without breaking anything then maybe you can look at my video here but uh, these are certainly some of the better uh, push to fit minis in the shade spire series there's not a lot of swearing involved they push fit quite well i don't believe i needed to use any green stuff on any of these uh, in order to get them to push fit together properly um, they they did actually go together quite well um, did we have any bits falling off and things like that no not that I can remember no real bits falling off either so there was no real need um, for glue either they weren't absolutely perfect um, you know the, there's a, there was a little bit of wrangling and things like that but they are close to as uh, good as it gets. I definitely give them a four out of five. I wouldn't say it's a five out of five. I think the easiest of the push fit miniatures I've come across so far are actually the uh, Godsworn Hunt miniatures. They, those are the ones that really do push fit together straight away and hold together really well and you can actually play with them straight away. So, painting. So, where did I start on these uh, this warband? This warband is quite different to um, the other warbands. And the main reason is, is the only thing that's kind of a running theme across them, to be perfectly honest, other than the twins, is the base. Everything else is kind of different because it's really a completely different model from a completely different species. So that makes this warband a little bit harder to get your head around when you're actually painting because you can't quite get into a groove in terms of a certain style. And this is what really tricked me out when I actually came to paint these, uh, this warband in terms of trying to get my head around switching from one mode to the other. So I'll start with the mini that I began with, which was this blue horror. So, Blue Horror, I started off using a Formula P3 blue, a sort of a light blue, arcane blue I think they call it. And then I washed it with a purple and a blue wash. Probably two parts blue, one part purple, to give it a bit of depth. I then highlighted back up again with that arcane blue on the skin and then toned it down because it was just too bright. I toned it back down again with a very thin blue wash and it worked out quite well. I'm quite pleased with the way that worked out. Some of the details on this miniature, let's start with the face. So. I just picked out the eyes with a little bit of white and uh, I just allowed uh, a black wash around the eyes basically to give them a bit more in-depthness to them. I 
Painted the teeth a white, used a black wash, then highlighted back up with the white on the teeth. And this guy's also got like spikes coming out the sides here. So I did a similar thing with the spikes. I did them just like the teeth. I did the tongue a straight vermilion red from um, Vallejo. And the bands around him, I basically did a gold with just a simple Agrax wash. Nothing fancy. I did pick out the gemstone on his right hand in a blazing orange. The beak's kind of interesting. So the beak I actually spent a little bit of time over. So the beak I did like in a light grey with a black wash and then highlighted up with a thin white and just to basically make it look like the beak had that kind of cirations going on it. One of the nice cool things on this miniature is this is, miniature is quite good to practice some very basic blending. So flames are really the best way for you to start to learn uh, basic blending. So uh, effectively when I talk about basic blending on a flame kind of miniature it's like base it in one color in this particular case that's a yellow I then washed it with a thinned down blazing orange and a little bit of red ink and then I highlighted the toppermost parts with a yellow and tried to blend that in as the ink is kind of settling a bit up to uh, about halfway and then washed it again with a lighter version of the same wash picked out the top parts in the yellow and then just did the tippy tippy points um, in a white so quite nice way to sort of practice learning to do a little bit of blending didn't get a brilliant transition on it but it looks quite good suitably arcane I was quite pleased with the way that this mini turned out. In terms of the base, um, the way I did the base on these is I basically did them in a flesh and then I used a P3 brown wash and I picked out the symbol on the actual base in an arcane blue. Kept it quite simple, nothing too fancy. So after I did the blue horror I then moved on to the brimstone horrors which I thought were going to be a complete piece of cake. Uh, actually they turned out to be harder than I was anticipating because I hadn't painted yellow miniatures in quite some time and so I didn't quite get it right the first couple of times that I gave it a try and it turns out you know the old ways that you know of doing things are often the best. So in terms of the brimstone miniatures I actually I undercoated them in a white and then eventually I undercoated them in a white I started out with an Avalon sunset, didn't quite work out. So I then coated them a white and then used a sunburst yellow to give me my base. I then used a thin down sort of um, red ink mixed with a little bit of brazing orange as a wash. I then dry brushed it with white and then went over that white with a yellow to give them the, the yellow look. And, and that worked out quite well, but it took me quite a while to actually get to that point. I picked out the claws in the red, the eyes I did white with black outline, so I did it the classic way if you want to know how to do eyes, I did a video up here. So basically, black outline, white dots. Teeth, again, just kept it simple, just painted them white, black ink, and that was it. But it took quite a while to figure out the best way to do the actual you know, yellow side of things because I haven't done a solid yellow mini like that for quite some time. Again based on this same kind of idea except this one you've got um, a little bit more going on on the base it's recessed so I just painted the recessed part in the arcane blue and did a blue wash in it and, and then the rest of it I did I followed the same way as before which basically painted it a flesh and then a thin down brown ink over the top and then the flesh back around the rim. So what did I do next? Which ones did I do next? I think I did Vortimus the All-Seeing next. So Vortimus 
is a really cool miniature. And so the way I did Vortimus, let's start with his flesh. So I did his flesh in a very pale grey, almost a white. And then I did a blue wash on it. And then I did a highlights with that same very pale grey and touched up a couple of spots with the white and that came out quite well actually I'm quite pleased with the way that kind of worked in terms of his armor I went for a gold trim with um, the arcane blue and I washed the arcane blue in a blue wash and then basically used that as the edge and then repainted the arcane blue again and then picked out the gold on it and that worked out it felt like a real chore at the time like it wasn't really working but it did eventually get there in terms of his weapon um i actually found my copper this time so i did uh, the stalk as a copper and i just got at the time an amethyst purple from uh, coat to arms so i decided to do a little bit of color um, I had a little bit of difference there and so basically I painted the main parts of the top and the base in the purple and then picked out the sort of symbolism on it and the eye in a gold. Quite pleased with the way that kind of turned out. Adds just a little bit of uh, difference to it. The piece de resistance um, on this particular model, uh, so sorry, finally I should really talk about that the head so the head's basically he's wearing kind of like a mask because he's a cyclops i did that in in a copper again and then just picked out the eye same thing on the teeth white black wash go back over with a white the piece of resistance really on this model though is um the wing so the wing again is another opportunity for you to practice a little bit of blending wings are really nice for that because it gives you a clear way to see the way you probably should do the graduation so the lower feathers you do in a yellow the middle feathers you do in an orange the topmost feathers you do in a red and you kind of that's literally how you lay the paint on and then wet it up a little bit and try and mix the stuff together in terms of the wash that i used on this i used a thinned down caribou crimson and that worked out quite well. In terms of his loincloth, uh, I think I just did that in a straight white with a black wash and then highlighted back up with a white again, which is a bit unsubtle to be perfectly honest. I'm not totally happy with it. I think actually I would, if I was to do that again, I'd probably do it with a gray wash, but it works out okay. Base, basically the same sort of techniques as, as used before. There's nothing really new there. So I move on to Kacharik, and he is a Zangor, and again followed um, the same technique I used on Vortimus in terms of the flesh. I did a light grey, washed with the blue, picked out a little bit with the grey and a little bit of the white. In terms of um, the details on this miniature, he has got kind of... Um, things coming out on his shoulder and such so basically I just picked those out with a little orange and um, that's all I really did in terms of um, his belt and his armor I followed the same kind of technique as I used on Vortimus with basically an arcane blue blue wash and then pick and then pick out around it with the gold his weapon straightforward really i did basically the bit that he's holding in a silver with a black wash i did i picked out the the base and the guard with a gold in terms of the actual sword itself i did with a chainmail type silver like a darker silver and just did a straightforward black wash i didn't even bother highlighting it i probably should have done to be honest in terms of the orb at the bottom of the uh sword i did that in a red the feathers that he's got around uh, himself, his um, waist, they were a little tricky actually to do. And it took me a little while to kind of figure out something that, that kind of worked. 
So what I did was I painted them a white and then used a green wash on that and then highlighted up with the white again using a little dry brush and then thin down some bilious green as a wash and that kind of worked quite well and um, even though it was a bit of a fluke. In terms of the skulls that he's got around him I just did those in a flesh with a I think a formula p3 flesh wash which is kind of a ready color it's not really a flesh wash if you ask me in terms of the the his horns I did that in a flesh color paint I then used a brown wash and then highlighted up with the flesh again to give like the bones in terms of his mane, for want of a better description of it, I used a blazing orange followed by a brown wash and then used a little white to then highlight a few spots and then painted that white in a sunburst yellow to make it stand out a little bit. What about his face? So. His eyes on this guy weren't particularly difficult because they're really nicely done and recessed. I just picked them out with a spot of white and just relied on the original wash that I'd done on the flesh to go into the recesses. In terms of his beak, I did that in a blazing orange with a thinned down brown wash. Did a little highlight with a white again and then went over it with a yellow. In terms of his teeth, same again as I'd done before. I basically black wash, then went white over the top. Quite pleased with the way he turned out. It, I spent a good while on that guy trying to get the feathers right um, because it just wasn't working out. But I'm quite pleased with the way he, he worked out really. Loincloth wise, did the same, the same as Vortimus as well. Um, which is basically a white black wash highlight up with a white. So many people when they actually look at this particular warband are probably going to look at Navia and Tarosh and go, Ooh, not looking forward to those. And the reason why you would say that is they're flesh based human beings. People always get a bit nervous around uh, doing flesh. But these are some of the best minis um, from a sculpt perspective and flesh that you'll come across. And also, because they're wearing a mask, they've got an easy face to do as well. So these are actually a really good uh, mini um, to actually do a little bit of practice of the old flesh. And also, you know, if you look at these miniatures, you, they kind of need to look a bit ethereal about them and not really look human. So the way I did them was very stark. I did them with a flat flesh with a brown wash, a thin down brown wash, and then highlighted back up with the flesh and I didn't do anything else. Normally, I would do flesh quite differently to that and you can see a video about that up here. Um, but I decided I wanted it to be really stark on this particular mini and I used a arcane blue surrounded by a gold for the shield and that became like a running theme throughout this miniature. I did his loincloth in a blue as well with a blue wash and then highlighted back up in the arcane blue again. And his belt basically I did in a more in a bestial brown basically with um, the gold picking out on the circlets or whatever you want to call them that are around him and then his undercloth his underloin cloth i did in a white with i actually think at that point i may have actually learned to use um, a, a thin down gray wash and highlighted the back up in terms of his sickle i did his sickle in a gold and uh, and then used a thin down black wash on it and didn't do any highlighting really of, of any kind in terms of his face Again, that's in a gold, and I think I did a, just looking at it, yes, a thin down black wash on him again, and I picked out his eyes in a blue, and, and that was it, because the recesses were so good on this, I didn't need to worry, and I didn't really do anything more than that on this guy, and I'm quite pleased with the way the contrast worked on his skin, um, and the way this miniature really helps you, because it's very well sculpted, so the 
ink really falls into the cracks really well and then you just pick out what's remaining in um, so you get really nice effect if you just do that and let the miniature do the work for you rather than overworking it if we move on to Navia same thing really you know I used um, the front loin cloth I used like an arcane blue but I decided that the rest of her would be more sort of cave girly so I used basically a a dark brown like a Morneval brown and then basically used a dark brown wash on it and a little bit of highlighting in that same brown I did a weapon in a gold with a thin down um, Agrax and then on this one I actually used a, a, a different gold than I'd used on the other ones uh, I used shining gold um, throughout the other miniatures but on this one I actually used an antique gold I just wanted to see what it looked like I'd only just got it at the time from Vallejo and I decided that her shield would be you know purple so I used the amethyst purple that I'd gotten from Coat Arms with a purple wash and um, the antique gold I washed with an Agrax. Her face I did the same way, used the antique gold with an Agrax, picked out her eyes. Here I actually did a white background with blue blue eyes rather than just pick out the eyes like I did on her on her sibling. And the flesh I did also slightly differently um, than I did on her her sibling as well. So I didn't quite go for that stark, pale and pasty look um, that we'd seen on her brother. I actually uh, used similar technique though. So I did a flesh wash on her rather than use a dark brown wash. Highlighted back up with the same flesh that I'd used to paint her in the first place, but didn't um do it as quite um edge to edge as i done it on her sibling to rush quite pleased with the way that turned out kind of subtly different and um worked out quite well i'm quite pleased with that because you know paint and flesh is always troublesome because you have a much higher standard in your head because you know what it should look like so that's basically how i did it so hopefully you found that interesting and useful. If you did, please like, subscribe. I will be doing more. Catch you next time. Bye.